Today, we are continuing in a very short uh, two-part message series uh, that we've uh, entitled God's Word, The Miracle Seed. We are bringing out seven key insights from this parable. We covered two of them last Sunday. The first one we talked about is a fact that the seed is the Word of God. Our God's word is like miracle seed. The seed of God's word has to be sown in our hearts, not just in our minds. Our mind is important because it has to go through our mind. We need to understand it. But it has to get into our very inner person until we believe that word. I want to just go over the, the other insights we see here so that we can have the word of God produce in our our lives. The third important thing we see here is this, um, that the essence of what Jesus is saying is this. Once the seed is sown, the seed has to be protected and nurtured. That means you've got to continue watering it, continue cultivating it in order to produce for it, for the seed to produce. That means if I, just because I heard the word once, or just because I meditated in some of the promises once or twice, doesn't mean the job is done. No. I've got to continue watering that seed. I've got to continue pouring in water. I've got to continue nurturing that seed by continually hearing the word and meditating in that word. And number four, the fourth point, as we look at the three gospel accounts of the parable of sober, the fourth point we see here is this, that we must get an understanding of spiritual truth to keep Satan from stealing that word. What is, Satan, what is Satan coming after? He's coming after the word. He does not want the word to be sown in our hearts. Because he knows if the word is sown inside us, it will produce the work of God in our lives. Now what gives permission, Satan uh, 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 the permission or the, uh, the possibility of, of t stealing that word away when we hear it? Matthew says here, when we do not understand the word, he takes it away. So what kind of an understanding is he talking about? He's not talking about just intellectual understanding. Of course, you can read the English. You understand the language. You understand the meaning. Uh, you understand it. So what's he really talking about? He's talking about the spiritual understanding of the word, or we call it revelation. That means the eyes of your inner person understanding. You get a revelation of this, that this word is for me. This is God's truth to me. The fifth truth that we see about the word of God and, and what we must do to protect and nurture the word in our lives is that we, must, we will face hardships in line with that word. Persecution and tribulation comes for the sake of that word. You will face something that is just contrary, that's just opposite to the very word that you've been believing, that you've been sowing in your heart. What should you do? Hold on to that. The sixth thing that Jesus said here about uh, protecting the seed of the word is this. He said, you know, once that word is sown in our hearts, we also have to be careful about the thorns. So what are the thorns? He said, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things. So the thorns represent these distractions. Be careful of the cares of the world, right? We all have responsibilities, but then you got to let the priorities overrule responsibilities. And for you and me, the word of God is priority. And the last one, number seven, when we put what we see in the three gospels, we understand what we must do in order to see uh, the seed of the word produce in our lives. He says, uh, in Matthew 13, 23, we must understand the word. In Mark 4, in verse 20, we must accept the word or receive the word. And then in Luke 8 and uh, verse 15, we must retain the word. So three things we see. So there's a revelation of the word. You must receive the word. You must retain the word. And then he says, then the word will spring up and produce. So for the word to produce in our lives, 
you receive a revelation of that word in your heart. You receive that word and then you retain that word and that word will produce in your life.